Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Have I got a treat for you today. This video is full. It's full of our family favorites, things you may not have seen before, things that you always ask me about, and today I'm answering. And most of all, it's full of quick and easy hacks that will give your dinners that down-home flavor you've been looking for and save you time and money. So let's get started. Tonight we're gonna to make some Caesar chicken and I'm gonna start out just mixing up a topping that we use for it. And I'm using a half a cup of Caesar dressing, just this bottled Caesar that I get at Aldi. And I'm gonna put in about a fourth a cup of sour cream. Now we're just gonna set this aside while we prep our chicken. In most recipes, I will take a regular full-size chicken breast and just butterfly it. It cooks so much quicker that way, and it's just a whole lot easier. Now I'm just gonna season my chicken with some black pepper. I'm also gonna sprinkle on just a little Parmesan cheese, the grated kind in the can. Gonna flip these seasoned side down into my little small casserole dish here. Then we're gonna get the back side of them with the very same stuff. Now we're gonna take the Caesar and sour cream mixture and we're just gonna spread this on top of all of these chicken breasts. The recipe that I'm using, I actually halved this recipe. It calls for four full-size chicken breast pounded out. This is plenty for us, so I just prefer to do it this way. And then, of course, I also have the measurements for this little mixture that goes over the top. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but I did spray this casserole dish before I put the chicken in. <laughs> you can just about 99.9% .9 be certain I spray every dish <laughs> before I put anything in it. The recipe says to come back over the top of this with some more of your grated Parmesan cheese. But if I have some shredded parm in a bag or a little container, I always like to use it. I just really like that. Then I like to sprinkle just a little bit of parsley over the top of mine, just to give it a little bit of green color. Made this for many years, my family loves it. And I'm gonna put this uncovered in a 375 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Once that chicken is cooked completely, I do like to turn it up to broil and brown it up for just two or three minutes. Keep a real close eye on it. Then I pull it out and I just let it set on the stove covered with aluminum foil for about 10 minutes. It just helps to hold that heat in and it lets that Caesar dressing mixture kind of thicken up a little bit. Now, don't worry, you're still going to have plenty of gravy off of that, if you will, but it does help it to have that time to thicken up. Tonight's all about answering questions that you ask me. One of them is, how do you cook canned green beans? Well, I like these Kroger cut green beans. I really like these. I've had Aldi green beans. They're good. I love Allen's flat green beans. But this is the best way I have found to make canned green beans taste more like homemade. I pour them in right with the water out of the can. I've heard people rinse them or just drain that water off and put chicken broth in there. You do whatever you want to do, but that's how I do it. I put a little bit of salt in there, a little bit of pepper. I'm gonna put some brown sugar and I'm probably gonna put more than what most people would for one can of green beans, but that's how Patrick rolls. I'm also gonna get me a little bit of bacon grease right out of here and throw that in. If you don't have bacon grease, you can just use regular cooking oil or something like that. I also have this little bag of real bacon pieces, and I mean, there's just a little handful left in there. I'm gonna toss that in. Then I'm gonna come in with a nice big splash of Worcestershire sauce. If you have soy sauce, you're welcome to use that, but I'm not a big fan of the soy sauce. Now I'm gonna turn this up on a pretty high heat, mix all this in, I'm gonna let it come up to a real good boil. I'll show you, I like to cook my green beans pretty hard, 
Then I let them cook down till a lot of this liquid is evaporated out. You can see how those green beans are cooking really hard and that water will just cook lower and lower and it really softens those beans up and that is how we like them. If you've been here before, you've seen me do this, but I'm making it so I thought I'd just throw it in. We have all this in one place. I have this packet of instant mashed potatoes and instead of bringing to a bowl two cups of water, I bring to bowl a cup and a half of water. Then I finish it out with a half a cup of milk or evaporated milk or whipping cream. And I put that in here and then kind of get those instant potato flakes wet. Get it all kind of dissolved in there. And then you're just gonna let these stand for a couple minutes. This is just a really quick little way to take instant mashed potatoes up a notch and make them taste like homemade and these right here i'm really enjoying these buttery gold select um i've got some red ones to try and some that it said made in chicken broth so let's just let this set and let everything do its work now you can just see how pretty those mashed potatoes have done up I love instant mashed potatoes. The only thing that I do is I do come in with just a little extra salt and a little pepper. And even though they're the buttery select, I like to put a little bit of butter down in there and mix that in. And you've heard me say a million times, instant mashed potatoes make better potato cakes. Those of you guys that are new have said, what are potato cakes or how do you make potato cakes? Stay tuned, we're making potato cakes. I'm so excited. I just can't tell you how good this Caesar chicken is. The flavor is so good and it holds such moisture in and it makes that beautiful little gravy for your mashed potatoes too. So that would be hack number one, is learn how to doctor up your convenience foods. Look at these green beans. That looks like it has simmered all day long. Just regular green beans doctored up a little bit. And find your favorite convenience foods. Like I found the mashed potatoes that I love that I can always count on to cook up and taste good. I've got some greens in here I don't think I pointed out, but they're Margaret Holmes brand seasoned greens. I love those better than any homemade greens that I've ever made. So don't be embarrassed to try convenience foods. You can make them taste great. I just wanted to jump on here and introduce you to my friend Megan. Her channel is Megan's Kitchen, and we're collaborating on videos today. And if you have never seen Megan, you are gonna love her channel. She does weekly grocery hauls and a weekly what's for dinner. And Megan is a wonderful Southern cook, but she makes things that I never touch, things you'll never see here. Wonderful um, Asian cuisines and sushi and things like that. She is a great all-round cook and just a super nice girl. So I will leave her video and her channel linked down in my description box. When you're finished here today, be sure and check out Megan's Kitchen. And if you're coming over from Megan's channel, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoy your time here and we'll come back real soon. Tonight, I'm making a family favorite. This is my Aunt Kathy's Cowboy Beans and I've got a pound of ground beef and onions browning up over here. And we're going to preheat our oven to 400 degrees. I've got a two quart lidded casserole dish. This is like a bean pot. You could use a Dutch oven. I do like to spray up around the sides especially so that it won't be too hard to clean up. Next, I'm gonna put in two 15 ounce cans of pork and beans. You can also use one of the big cans. I think it's 28 ounces. Also gonna put in one cup of ketchup. I'm just gonna go ahead and use what's left in here. Gonna add in one tablespoon of chili powder. And we're gonna put in three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Just a little bit of salt to taste. 
I'm just going to combine all this. Now that my ground beef and onion is all done up, I just drained it really well. We're just going to combine the beans and the ground beef and onions and all this. And like I was telling you, this is a family favorite. This is my Aunt Kathy's recipe. I grew up eating this at her house. Absolutely loved it. And I've not changed one thing about it. I have this in a Pinterest link. And it is actually a picture of a recipe card from my freshman year of high school. My home ec recipe box. This is one of the recipes that I put in that. And I just took a picture of that and made a Pinterest link out of it for this recipe. This is also one of these recipes, like tonight we're having it for a main dish, but it makes great sides. It's good for cold winter days and it's good for hot summer picnics. You do want to cook this covered and I'm putting it in that 400 degree oven for one hour covered the whole time. All right, friends, tonight we're making potato cakes. My idea in planning this menu for this week, like I said, was to show you a lot of things you've been asking me about. Planned on using some leftover mashed potatoes. I just made one packet last night. We did not have enough. So I made a whole new envelope or package of instant mashed potatoes. The reason I like the instant, it's just more firm. And you definitely want these to be very cold and very firm. You can see I did put one egg in here. This kind of helps serve as a binder. Since I have a good amount of mashed potatoes, I'm putting in a good amount of green onion. I love green onion in my potato cakes. I'm gonna put a little bit of black pepper in here. And I'm gonna put in some of my anti no, -No seasoning. It is salt, but it also has onion powder and garlic powder in it. Those are all flavors that I love in my potato cakes. Now I'm gonna throw in just a little handful of cheddar cheese. Potato cakes is something that you just have to really feel the mixture. Mine are too runny right now. You can see this. You got to put a little bit of flour in them to help them kind of stick together. This is a half of a cup scoop. I've maybe used a third of that. Let's see what they look like. And as long as I've been making potato cakes, I still mess them up sometimes. I'll put them in there and they'll just be too runny and you can tell almost immediately. I think I'm gonna put in just a little bit more. I've got my cast iron pan on about medium heat. And I'm gonna use a generous helping of olive oil. And this is a pretty large skillet. Oh yeah, I got it hot. <laughs> because I got a lot of mashed potatoes here. I got a lot. I always just like to put a little off in here to test it. And it's sizzly. I'd say we're ready to rock and roll. Now the way I do mine is I just slide them out by the spoonful. Then I kind of like mush them down a little bit and then I don't touch them. I've seen people patty them out. If you want to do that, I've seen that. It looks like that works fine. But I just prefer to do mine this way and not patty them out. They do kind of expand when you get them in here and they start cooking up and you flip them so you gotta leave a little bit of room in between. You can see that just slid right around. My uh, oven or my stove here is a little bit off-centered. <laughs> so my grease likes to get down here in one corner. You don't want to move them. You don't want to touch them. You want to give them a good two or three minutes right here on this side to get nice and crispy on the bottom. That way, when you go to flip them, they're not going to stick on you. They're going to come off nice and easy. When I flip mine, then I'll smush them down a little bit on the side that's kind of browned up.
This is also my newer cast iron skillet. I think it's 12 inches. It is the biggest one that I have. Uh, Callie got it for me at the South Pittsburgh Cornbread Festival down at the Lodge Factory one year. She got it like, I think it was like $10. If you ever get to go to the Cornbread Festival, be sure and tour the Lodge Cast Iron Factory down there. They close it down and let people come in and tour. That being said, the reason I said that is that, you know, every piece of cast iron to me it has its own like personality and cooks a little bit different. You wouldn't believe what just a couple inches difference in size makes when cooking in these. You can see where I flattened them right around here. They need to get brown. So I always flip them over and give the other side another little fry. That leads us to hack number two, is to let your food do double duty for you. I love to cook once and eat twice. My mom made these potato cakes for us growing up all the time, and I love them. Whoever thought of that? It's a wonderful way to use up leftovers. Like I said, a lot of times I just make instant mashed potatoes and put them in the fridge to make potato cakes. They're delicious. Make plenty of something so you can have it another night that week. It really helps you out. And our beans are coming out of the oven now, and you see how they are piping hot in there. Let them sit covered and rest there for about 10 minutes. When you take that lid off, look at that rich goodness. These beans have the best flavor. It is a savory, but a little bit of sweet, and it's just so good. This is one of my very most favorite meals. That leads us to hack number three, is ask your family for those recipes. Those things that you love, that they make all the time, or that you used to have as a kid, not only do they taste delicious, but you are gonna be passing those memories along and keeping that alive for another generation and I absolutely love that about cooking is all the memories that are involved with these recipes and just the quick and easy tips that your mom or your grandma can pass on to you it makes such a difference in your cooking now we're going to move on to another favorite of my family and this is our take on salmon patties but it is tuna patties and i use just two small five ounce cans of chunk light tuna just really the cheapest one but i do like to make sure that i really have it drained well i want this to be very dry and chunky when i start out put in about three big tablespoons full of mayonnaise then I'm gonna season it up with a little black pepper and I'm gonna use my anti no no seasoning and that is salt and it also has garlic and onion powder in it. Also gonna break in one egg and then mix that up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add in a diced green onion. You can also just use a regular onion. I'm also gonna put in about a quarter cup of cornmeal mix like what you make cornbread with and about a quarter cup of flour. I love the crunchiness that the cornmeal gives it. I'm gonna give that a little stir and I'm just gonna put that in the fridge for a little while. This has become my new favorite way to make potatoes. I've just got some diced up golden potatoes here and I've just drizzled them with olive oil and I'm going to season them up with my anti no -nos. Also gonna give it a little bit of paprika and I love to put Italian seasoning on my potatoes too. And I'm just gonna stir all these up in this bowl to coat them really well. And I'm actually gonna cook them in my air fryer today. And I like to line it with parchment and then I just try to spread them out as an even layer. I cook them a total of 20 to 25 minutes on 400 degrees and I do stir them about halfway through. Now we're gonna pull those tuna patties out and cook them up. I've got some butter and oil heated in my cast iron skillet. And I do like to put a little flour on my hands and patty these tuna patties out. You can see I just put a little extra flour down in that bowl. And then I'll just roll a little ball of the tuna mixture around and then pull it up and patty it out. And this just takes a couple minutes on each side. It fries up really quick, just like the potato cakes did. Again, I think cast iron is so good to fry in. I just use the same technique as I did with the potato cakes. I make all different sizes. <laughs> I'm not real good about um, making everything even, but 
hey, it's just us around here. We're not too worried about it. And just look at that golden color that that cornmeal gives them. I really love the cornmeal in the tuna patties. And I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit of tartar sauce to have with this. Start out with some mayonnaise, put in a little bit of yellow mustard, just a tiny bit of lemon juice and some sweet pickle relish. Give that a mix and stick it in the fridge and let it get nice and cool too. This is one of our favorite meals. You can see here we've got leftover cowboy beans and leftover greens. And tip number four is to think outside the box with your proteins. I know canned salmon is getting more expensive, especially if you're like me and you like the kind that already has the bones out of it. That is why I started using tuna for this, and I love it. So don't be afraid to try something different, maybe a cheaper cut of meat, prepared a different way, and season, season, season it up. Here's a little something I kept promising you, and I kept forgetting. We're gonna make sweet tea today. This is just a really thin kettle, cheap. Got it at Walmart or somewhere, but like you can hear, it's just aluminum. Then I like it because it heats up quick and I don't cook anything in this pot. Only emergency situation if I have to pull this out. This is just for making tea. Fill this with cold water. I didn't get it all the way full. And I just use these. These are a Kroger brand tea bag, but this is a pitcher size tea bag. And I use three of these to make one gallon of tea. Just gonna put them in here and let them get good and boiling. While we're waiting on our water and tea bags to boil. I'm coming to the sink with my tea pitcher and I'm going to put in one and a half cups of sugar. I like to dissolve my sugar in just a little bit of water. Just a little bit right down here at the bottom so that whenever I pour my tea over into this it is good to go. The thing about tea, you cannot let it get cold. If you want sweet tea, you need to sweeten it when it's hot right off of the stove. And the longer that you let it set, the sweeter it gets. You don't want it to set too long, it gets bad, like a week. But like if it sets overnight or if you make it early in the morning, it's gonna be better. This, I put, you know, a full cup and a half of sugar because we're gonna drink it right now. But you can get away with a little less sugar if you're gonna let it sit a little while. And let's talk about the elephant in the room. This big ugly spoon, this is only used for tea. Tea will discolor things. And this is my big scrunchy teaspoon and everybody here knows this is only for tea. Right here's what you're looking for, a hard rolling bowl when it gets to this. I just cut it off and I just let it sit here. And I mean, just a few minutes. I don't like let it steep long. I just let it kind of cool a bit. And right here's what I'm talking about. It's still got just a smidge and a bubble to it, but it's good to make. <laughs> Forgive me, I might be going about this wrong-handed, but I just kind of hold my tea bags in here, pour it over. And if you don't make as much tea as I do, you could use any pot you have. There's nothing magical about these scrunchy utensils. I just make a lot of tea, so I don't like to mess up my good stuff. Something I do is stream some cold water over these tea bags, get every little bit you can out of them. Stir and go, and I always go to the top. There you go, sweet iced tea. Put it in the refrigerator, get it good and cold. It's wonderful with lemon in it or orange or even just by itself. Ours, we're gonna drink it tonight with dinner, so I may just leave it out. We just had to put a lot of ice in it. And who doesn't love a refreshing glass of iced tea? That would be hack number five, is do learn to make some things at home. You can spend a lot of money buying pre-made tea in the jug, and it is so easy and cheap to make at home, and it tastes so much better. You know I love convenience foods, but they're not always the cheapest. So if you can learn to do homemade biscuits and things like that, just knowing that if you need to make something from scratch, you can, that's peace of mind. Starting with a pound of hamburger meat, I've got browning up with some onion, 
and we are going to make us some chili. It's turned off to, I guess, Red Bud Winter here in East Tennessee. And this right here is the star of our chili show. Going in with a 29 ounce can of Lux Pinto beans. Using two 15 ounce cans of mild chili beans. Going in with one can of diced tomatoes and green chilies. And I'm not draining anything or rinsing any of the beans. Putting in a 15 ounce can of tomato sauce and I just realized that was not Rotel. I always fill this can up with water and add it in. The star of the show is this Chilio chili seasoning. I've used this for years. My mom turned me on to this and it takes your chili over the top and I am using half a cup out of here. That equals what's in one envelope of this. Once your chili gets back up to where it's boiling, I like to give it just a little bit of stir. Then I'm just gonna put the lid on it and I'm gonna let it sit here and simmer for 10 minutes is fine, but if you can go 30 minutes or longer, it makes it even better. I'm really sad that I mistook those tomatoes for Rotel, but I'm sure this will still be delicious. I've never tweaked this recipe from when I first started making it, but you for sure could you could replace any of these beans. I just know that my hubby does not like those big red kidney beans, and he doesn't like really big pieces of tomato either. But whatever your family likes, put it in here. You could definitely cook this in the crock pot. Just brown your ground beef up beforehand and put everything in there and let it cook all day. But I tell you what, there's something so homey and so old school about just putting a pot of chili on top of the stove. I love it. I love that smell. I just love hearing it sizzle and bubble up in here. I just think that is one of the most comforting things in the world. And the most important thing to remember when you want that down-home southern flavor is that these are the people you love that you're cooking for. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it's a bologna sandwich or if it's a T-bone steak, you're cooking for them out of love. Share those meals together as a family. There's going to be nights we're busy. There's going to be nights we burn it. But you're going to be making memories. Thanks so much for being here this week. Don't forget to check out Megan's channel. And until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.